Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Azali's The 99 Beautiful Names of God. Al-Maqsad al-Hasna fi sharh al-Asma'illah al-Husna. Translated by David Burel and Azir Zahir. The, uh, during the last uh, session, we um, completed reading about uh, the attributes of Zahir al-Batan, the manifest, the hidden. These uh, were number 75, 76. So we should be dealing with 77 and 78, except that they are placed after number 85, where they would fit. So now, Albar, number 79, this is on page 137. Albar, the doer of good, is the beneficent, the beneficent one, Al Muhsan. The absolute doer of good is the one from whom every good deed and beneficence comes. Man can be a doer of good only in the measure that he keeps himself occupied with doing good, especially towards his parents, Birr al teachers elder and, and elders. Um, let's uh, continue by reading about what is reported here about uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Moses, peace upon him, that uh, it's been it's been told, it's been uh, said, Ruya, so it's not the uh, strongest uh, form of uh, reporting. It has been said that uh, Prophet Moses, that while his... Uh, Lord was speaking to him, he saw a man standing by the leg of the throne and he marveled at his exalted position. So he said, O Lord, how has this man attained this place? And the Lord said, He was not envious of any of my servants for what I gave to them, and he was good to his parents. He was good to his parents. Uh, let me say that parents are not usually commanded reminded to be good to their children because it is natural it is there's certain instinct being a parent being especially the mother and this is why in you know the uh, the companion the young companion who asked the Prophet Sallam who in, who's entitled to my best companionship and he told him your mother he, he asked then whom he said your mother and for the third time he asked then whom he said your mother and the fourth time he said your father a very beautiful uh, tradition indeed. And the uh, Muslim scholar said, the first, your mother, is in exchange for pregnancy. The second, uh, your mother, is in exchange for uh, delivery, uh, labor and delivery. And the third one is for uh, breastfeeding and nurturing and raising the child. So parents are not... Uh, reminded of birr al-awlad because it's there, it's uh, instinctive. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't remind ourselves of the uh, of this beauty towards uh, uh, children. Being good to them is not only material gifts. Being good to them is to raise them well good education, good morals, uh, and also the uh, good planning for uh, for life. And uh, from their youth to instill in them the uh, serving oneself, serving the community, being good to one's parents, but also by extension to the uh, to the adults, to the elders, especially the elderly in the uh, community. Effectively, not to postpone uh, sharing responsibility. Like, the, you know, uh, this one of the things that people do nowadays is that they do things on behalf of their children for a long, long time. And this ex ex literally it extends the, the, that, uh, uh,
the the life as a child so the the age the the body legally everything should be should say here we have an adult except that inside this adult there is a a child who refuses to grow up and uh, there is a story about a muslim scholar who hastened after hajj and this is uh, at a time when people would use uh, of course animals to travel uh, so he wanted to leave immediately after Hajj, and when he was asked, when he was asked why, he did mention that it is bir al awlad. So we uh, we do bir, and we hope that we receive their bir uh, later on in our uh, lives. Regarding the particulars of God, the Most High is doing good and His beneficence to His creatures. However, expounding it would be too long. And some of the things we have mentioned should inform one about it. But everything in the universe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for our to serve us, uh, to serve us while we are treading on this path again, uh, almost like a, a U turn, there's a path that is going to the uh, hereafter. And uh, this globe, this universe, was available to us so that we do not spoil it. And we take from it uh, without causing corruption on earth. And what a big corruption war is. Starvation. Destruction. destruction of hospitals, universities, schools, uh, the uh, ultimately when there is no fuel, there is no uh, water, and the uh, senseless killing tens of thousands of people, mostly children and women, even if they were all men, that does not justify all this bloodshed. Such a sad story of humanity. At Tawab number 80, the ever relenting makes reference to the facilitating the cause of causes of repentance in his servant's time, and again by making manifest to them some of his signs. At Tawab, this of course it is emphatic. And uh, Because people do sin, and uh, as in the uh, as as in the hadith, all the children of Adam are sinners. كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون. All the children of Adam are sinners, and the best of sinners are the repenters. So we oft sin. It is not that it has been decreed upon us. It's within the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We often sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepts the repentance. He often forgives tawab. So he facilitates subhanahu wa ta'ala the causes of repentance in his servant's time and again by making manifest to them some of his signs. His counsel to them and disclosing his deterrence and warnings to them to the point where once informed by his instruction of the dangers of their sins they will begin to experience the fear occasioned by his deterrence and have recourse to repentance so that the favor of God, the Most High, will return to them on his accepting their turning to him. Counsel whoever accepts time and again the excuses of those who do wrong among those entrusted to his care as well as those of his friends 
and acquaintances is indeed characterized by this quality and has gained a share of it. Uh, people judge by sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges by repentance. And repentance, from an Islamic perspective, the conditions for repentance is that one number one, you stop that sin at the moment you uh, you repent. Your intention should be never never back to that sin. Even if even if you go back to sinning, but at the moment of repentance, your your internal declaration will be no more of that particular uh, sin from which you are repenting. So sincerity, stopping what you have, uh, what you were uh, doing. Uh, sometimes uh, it could be uh, the sin could be related to addiction and this is the uh, the most difficult part See, people could uh, lapse into their old uh, bad habits and uh, when one repents if the sin entails retaining the rights of people such as uh, Stealing, for example, uh, taking something that does not belong to you, then uh, then one should do. You don't cleanse your uh, record. Um, you know, during Hajj, if there are rights of people, you should do that before the uh, Hajj. Give back to people what belongs to them. Or sometimes you are you are not giving people their own rights from the in, you know in the first place say that someone in the family one of the siblings is in control of the uh, of inheritance and uh, it could be the eldest but not necessarily so and um, he is not giving it could be the case that he gives the uh, the male um, children meaning the uh, his uh, his brothers but he would not give his sisters and sometimes they they just give them some gift uh, and practically to shush the I know that many women speak to me about their uh, uh, inheritance not being given to them it's difficult they have they have a life of their own you know they uh, their children will grow up they would like to go to university they uh, may be helping them to uh, uh, build a, a house maybe helping them with, with other things etc so in fact in in islam if she does not have if there is no inter in inheritance and she is poor and her brother is uh, is rich he should really provide for her so uh, whoever accepts time and again the excuses of those who do wrong among those entrusted to his care as well as those of his friends and acquaintances is indeed characterized by this quality and has gained the share of it al muntaqim the avenger is the one who breaks the back of recrecterant, punishes criminals, and intensifies the punishment of the oppressor. Al-Muntaqim. Al-Muntaqim, the avenger, is the one who breaks the back of the recalcitrant, punishes criminals, and intensifies the punishment of the oppressor. The oppressor, al-Zalim, here, al-Taghiya, al tuga in the plural. And... Uh, the oppressors what comes to uh, one's mind is uh, that which is associated with uh, uh, with political office and the most uh, the oppression uh, when we talk about the colonial settler movements spreading out from Europe they cause so much harm really around the world Europeans when they uh, arrived in the uh, what later on became known as America the United States what happened to the indigenous people is uh, definitely uh, an oppression and uh, 
which entails also they um, killed so many directly and indirectly until really very late uh, and in one military campaign against the uh, what later on became known as uh, these are the indigenous people of North America uh, they had agreements with them and then later on the American government uh, broke the uh, agreement and there was one military campaign to literally to take away land from them and what is shameful is that there was a priest uh, involved in that pretty much like in Myanmar uh, these Buddhist monks also participating in uh, uh, killing uh, and oppressing the uh, Rohingya Muslims or literally about what happened in Australia to the uh, Aborigines Belgium and Central Africa and almost 15 million victims and still that uh, it only takes different forms still it's there Imam Wazir continues by saying but only after excusing and warning them and after giving them the opportunity and the time to change yet this is harsher Yet, this is a harsher vengeance than a quick punishment. For when the punishment is swift, one does not persist in disobedience. And as a consequence, he does not deserve the full punishment. And we do say, Yumhil wala yuhmil. Imam Ghazali says that, uh, really it's, it takes place after uh, uh, warning after giving them the opportunity and time to change to repent to change course so uh, one should not also the, uh, be deceived by uh, the fact that things are okay going well uh, for him or for her if, if he's a, an oppressor or a criminal or it will catch up so there is uh, one is giving uh, time but not indefinitely council human vengeance is praiseworthy if it takes vengeance on the enemies of god the most high and the worst such enemy is one's own lower soul so it behooves him to take vengeance on it inasmuch as it yields to disobedience or fails in its duty of worship as it is reported regarding uh, Abu Yazid al-Bastami of course may God be merciful to him that he said my soul was so lazy one night as to keep me from a litany so I punished it by depriving it of water for a year in this way uh, should one per pursue the path of vengeance okay when he said he uh, deprived it for a year one should understand is that uh, keeping it on the edge like we'll give it for example some water but not to quench the uh, thirst uh, I would I would really uh, uh, you know either interpret it contextualize it try to find or simply say uh, don't um, because some people might be uh, naive enough to take the any text at face value this is a text that needs reinterpretation so uh, uh, I would share a different a different story um, again, it's about the uh, the word the he described here as the uh, litany, but the awrad, it's basically your. Uh, uh, it could be part of your word to recite some part, certain part of the Quran. It could be part of your word to pray a certain number of uh, rakats, prostrations during the late part of the night, it, making dhikr a certain number, uh, etc. So uh, one uh, scholar, he received a gift 
uh, it was Faludaj uh, and uh, this would be like the uh, cream of wheat with uh, uh, with butter and honey uh, okay so he did not eat it immediately he just put it put the sweets that was given to him as a gift right next to his mattress and he addressed himself not anybody else he addressed himself saying if you uh, if you uh, do pray tonight but it's qiyam idha qumti min al-layl meaning after i have um, uh, you know a share of sleeping will get up it's before fajr still if you do that you will taste this sweet if not not you are not going to have any taste of it so that's that's uh, doable uh, and it does not pose danger as uh, not drinking uh, water. It has been said that psychologically, people are more likely to perform uh, well to perform point if they uh, if they turn the task into a question. For example, am I going to pray? Rather than saying it as a statement, I am going to pray, you know, the extra night prayers, the Qiyam, you know, tonight. So uh, people psychologically are better off if they ask the question, am I going to pray the Qiyam al uh, tonight? Try it. Anything that encourages one to perform uh, better is welcomed. So he deprived Abu Zil Bastami, he deprived himself. Of course, remember that he said that he, he subsisted on wild herbs in the prairies of Baghdad. And uh, of course, it's for a, for quite a, a long time. Inshallah, suffice it for um, this session. And we'll uh, continue with Al-Afu in, in the next session, Inshallah. Until then, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashadu ala 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 ala